Welcome back to more of this drawing. If you didn't watch the last video, it doesn't really matter anyway. But that video is probably more entertaining because this one is just line art cleanup. I'm throwing in some base colours and there's going to be a little bit of shading at the end. This video demonstrates some of the problems I had with the line art and how the base colours were affected by it and picking the base colours. The thing is, with the brush that I did the line art with was G Pen 4 and some of the areas that I used the brush on uh, have a lower opacity because of the way the brush is made which gives a nice effect for the line art but it makes colouring it a nightmare so considering the fact that you have to know you have to make sure the colours look okay under the line art especially if it's a thick line art because there was one drawing I did way back when I like, first made this pen where I didn't take enough note of the colours under the line art until I posted it and realised that the colours under the line art didn't look great. So I ran into a few col problems when I was colouring this piece. So with most of my drawings I use a base colour to fill in the whole drawing before I put in the rest of the colours just to create a layer mask which I can clip over and add all the different colours. The thing with this one was using the lasso tool took way too long. I couldn't fill it in with the fill tool because I, you just saw it just left a lot of gaps and didn't co colour the line art properly. I was trying here to invert the selection which is a thing that I commonly do with some of my drawings but it also didn't fill in the line art completely so I went back to lassoing it. After that I found that using the G Pen 2 was a vi more viable option because it had lower stabilisation and it was a lot more accurate and it was easier to rub away when you made a mistake. During during this, to make sure the colours looked okay under the line art, I would change the colour of the 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 base colour to see it to a more piercing blue colour to try and like see it better under the line art. Before I thought, wait, why don't I just change the colour of the line art? Set it to a multiply layer. There we go, can see under it now. Now I'm just working on that. But eventually, I realised that the blue and pink colour probably wasn't a good option because you couldn't really see if the blue colour was going over the border too much. So once I changed the colours back, you might notice that there's a little blue coming out of some of the line art. I wasn't colouring the lines, I guess. So I had to try and play around with this quite a lot. And so I just actually figured, well, as long as it looks good, when black line art with the line art colour that it's going to be at the end then why should I worry too much because that's how people are going to see it. No one's going to be worried about whether the drawing looks good at this stage. I think I thought that if the line art, if the colouring looked good under the line art then I would be able to use a multiply layer as the in with the line art instead of having to go in and colour the line art myself because colouring the line art is one of my least part, favourite parts of doing a drawing but I ended up just colouring the line art in any way because the multiplier thing, the multiplier layers were just too hard to navigate I guess it was just, it would have been more effort to work with a multiply layer than it would be with a with well just with a normal layer with the clipping mask where I colour in the line up by hand manually. With this colouring technique I'm using at the moment, as long as I have a border of colour, solid border of colour around the whole piece, then I could just use the fill tool in the middle of it and I would have one clear base colour over the whole thing, which then I can use as a clipping mask. I put a folder with the clip clip on it and I'll use that as the base so nothing will go out of the blue area that I just coloured. So now that I'm picking, I'm colour picking different colours to go into the drawing and I don't like the colours I picked out. I think I, re more recently, like very recently, like quite just after this drawing, I figured a lot better way of picking colours which is using more harmonious colours and I, I didn't think too much about doing that with the tree but it would have made it more effective so later on I had to go in with a 
tone curve to correct the colours a bit instead of actually starting out with good colours. So I find what helps when it comes to picking out colours is if you kind of, if you limit yourself to one section of the colour wheel. So when you're coming to a harmonious colours, try and limit yourself to a small section of the colour wheel because you'll be surprised what range of colours, what kind of colours you can represent with just a limited palette. So you can make some quite greeny colours out of the yellow on the colour wheel and you can make some quite like browny colours out of the red. Like if I stuck to that yellow, orange, red part of the colour wheel, but I didn't dive too much into the green part, I think I would have had a lot more of a harmonious colour palette for the nature in the scene. It would have also helped if by using that limited colour palette I stick more to orangey colours that that way the blues of the tunic and the thing that I never decided on what Zelda was wearing the blue clothes that they're wearing would contrast nicely with the scene so your eyes would be drawn to the figures of Link and Zelda and I did correct this later on with a tone curve, but it's important to try and like get to know these things without relying on layer modes and layer correction and stuff. Like the layer correction layer modes should be a thing that you know how to use, but you should like keep it near the end of the drawing, you shouldn't rely on it too much as long because it's principles of art, it's you learning art and stuff and it's it's a good way to learn if you don't rely on these things either way i did rely on them for this drawing and if i were to go back i think i would t take a lot more care, care, care into color selection but can we appreciate how good look link looks in this drawing after last drawing he didn't look too great i wanted to honour his linkedness or whatever I said last time and I think he looks a lot better in this drawing I'm a lot more happy with the result of this one rather than the last one I, I like Zelda in the last one and I, w I want a good drawing of Link and I think this is it he looks good Zelda looks good too they both look good they look great I like this drawing <laughs> I, I am really proud with the results of these drawings um the result of this drawing and yeah, I quite like it. So what I do here is I colour in all the food with this pink colour to separate it from the blue of the rest of it. So now the things that are pink colour uh, have a separate clip to them. So they have a separate folder that's clipped to them. So they're like nothing I draw, anything I draw, it's all well, the colours are gonna stay inside of the lines with the food drawn in it. What it also help, what also helps me when it comes to picking colours is I was talking about the whole limited palette where you limit yourself to one section of the colour wheel but it also helps limit the amount of colours you use. You don't want to like use the whole rainbow of colours, you don't want to like introduce 50 different colours, you want like, you, you don't want too many colours in the drawing so a, so, the colour of Link's boots is the colour of the chopping board, the rice balls, or omnigiri, or whatever you call them on. And the top part of his boots is with the colour of the bowl, that's the same colour as the fish, the chopping board is the same colour as the other fish. I did colour that other fish a bluey colour, that's just because it did end up looking a little the same-ish. Same -ish. And... I mentioned last video I did think some of the food did blend into the background a bit and I think it was because I was using a lot of brown colours for the food and that next to the tree probably didn't help it stand out too much. What helps later on, because in the drawing one of the most standout colours was that red of the apple, I reintroduced that red in some of the mushrooms in the bowl to kind of spread out the colour a bit so it doesn't look too your eyes don't get too drawn to that area because there's different colours there. You're more likely to look over the food a little more because the colours, the brighter colours are dispersed throughout the whole thing. A lot of art 
is about how you lead the eye through the drawing. I, I don't think about it too much, but I probably should, because the times I do think about it, it looks a lot better. So, some people talk about competition, composition rules, like the Fibonacci sequence, which is 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, where if you drew boxes of this size, and you connected them with a curved line, you'd make a spiral. And people use that spiral to make a composition which leads your eye through a piece. So basically your eye just follows the spiral around the piece, leading to the centre of the spiral where your eye is most likely to focus. That's where your eye is going to focus the most. So it's not just that though. There's loads of different ways to lead someone's eye around somewhere, so it, it's all about contrast. So if you have harmonious colours next to, there's one piece in the picture which has a contrasting colour. If your whole piece was orange and you had one little piece blue in the drawing, your eye is immediately going to go to that blue. If you have this really detailed drawing and you have this little simple bit at one point in the drawing, your eye's going to go to the simple bit, whereas you could always go the opposite with that. You could always say, like, if you have this really simple drawing but this really complex bit at some point in the drawing, you're going to look at that first. Um, and another focal point, like a really key focal point a lot of people look at, is a face. People are drawn to faces, and this is why when you're looking at this drawing, the first thing you're probably going to see is Zelda's face because the blue the blue of her top dress whatever she's wearing is it's visually appealing you're like it's contrast with the rest of the scene you're gonna look at that first then you're gonna look at her face because it's the lightest thing in the drawing and it's also a face you're drawn to the face and you're drawn to the eye line you're seeing where she's looking and she's looking at Link and then your eyes drawn to Link and because he's also wearing something blue, your eye is drawn to the blue. Because they they wouldn't stand out as much if it wasn't for their blue tops and blue clothing. So when it comes to the colours on the piece, I made them more harmonious by using the tone cu curved layer because I, they didn't like the original colours of it. And the tone curve made it a lot better, it just made it so... I added like a more orange hue over the whole thing and it just it just makes it all look more cohesive together. I also added another tone curve layer where I put all the shading where you kind of it was just a darker version and I just erased all the highlights or the parts that were being touched by the light. It's a quick way of getting shade colours but it's also good to figure out how to do it without tone curve. So here in the shading I went in with the G4 pen once again, the same one I, I used the line art with, and I erased some of the shadow and I added some of the shadow in, and it was just a kind of different texture of the drawing, because I could have left it at the sh cell shaded look, but I, I, I preferred adding in the other just lighter colours into the shadows since if you if you had somewhere if you're looking at Link's hair at the bottom of his fringe I guess the light from his face is going to be bouncing into the hair so the bottom of the fringe is going to look a little lighter considering it's bouncing off his head um, later on, I go and add about slights like that, so I introduce, I airbrush the colour of his face into his hair. It, that sounds weird, you have a face in your hair. 